Hallelujah. Oh my, blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory. Let's give the Lord worship. Let's praise Him. Is what it to be praised. That's what we come to do. I believe you can do louder, you can do better. Just open up and try to get in the spirit. worship the Lord. Just close your eyes and get in the spirit. Look to heaven. Look towards heaven. Go before the throne and see the heavenly order. See the living creatures worshiping. See the elders. That's what Revelation 5 is all about. That's why it's our scripture. So you can always climb up. You can always get before the throne. And see the glory. The seven rainbows. The living creatures. The 24 elders, and then you see angels 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands worshiping before the throne. Then you know that God created you as earthly angels to worship Him as it is done in heaven, so we do on the earth. And we are the redeemed. People don't worship because they have not been able to climb above the earth. They have not been able to rise above the earthly atmosphere. But when you go beyond the earthly atmosphere, when you go beyond the five senses, when you go beyond your spiritual sense, and you climb into the Shekinah, you enter into the holies of holies, you come before the throne. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for us. The blood of Jesus Christ has made a way. That we can come before the presence. We can enter into that presence. We can come before the throne. And you can't be the same. You are so lost in the spirit. Your flesh drops down. You rise above the earthly things. And go into the heavenlies. 
the believer's position where the glory never fails. All you see around the throne is the seven spirits, the seven rainbows, and the heavenly order as the angels, as the living creatures worship, as the four beasts worship, as the 24 elders worship, and angels, the 10,000 worship. favor by worshiping you. We are privileged, Lord, to be worshipers, to be elected, to be chosen, to be predestinated in these last days, to be king lamb worshipers, to find our place in Revelation 5 as a redeemed of the Lord, redeemed out of all every kindred and, and nation and tongue and peoples. Lord, redeemed unto your great name to worship and adore you. Oh God, even as angels worship you, the living creatures worship you, the, the 24 elders worship you. Lord, and here we are tonight as heavenly angels. Oh God, we lift our hands, Lord. We clap them, oh God. Father, we worship and adore you. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for redemption. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Father, for a new life in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the faith that lives in us. We thank you for the hope of the resurrection. Hallelujah. Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you for this evening bringing us together in the presence of the Lord. Father, I pray that every one of us will be able to climb into that atmosphere. Lord, every one of us be lifted high, lifted above the earthly things, the natural things that does weigh us down. But Lord, may we climb into the heavenlies, the believer's position. Lord, where your prophet revealed to us in the book of adoption that that's the, that's the believer's position in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and that's where the glory never fails. Hallelujah. The abiding presence of the living God and in that Shekinah that dead can never stay dead. Lord, in that Shekinah, in that ark that's the shoe bread Lord, which never contaminates. Lord, that's the presence of the light. And that's our position. May each one of us press into that position tonight, Lord, until the natural things won't bother us. Until our human things won't bother us. Lord, until we can find solace, joy, peace in your divine presence. Bless us this afternoon to the reading of your word and minister to our hearts minister to our needs minister to our bodies give us strength, good health and strength Lord Father to press on to the coming of the Lord be with us now Father to the reading of your word and to the preaching of your word in Jesus Christ's name we pray Amen Praise the Lord. God bless you. Let's put our Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 12.
We'll start reading from verse 7 of Revelation chapter 12. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the, drag, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Praise God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. God bless you, and you may be seated. And welcome to this special service this, this day. Every day is special. Amen. Because it's the grace of God that brought us. Amen. Anything else could have taken us away from here. But we thank God that we are here today. So it's a very special time. After all the labors in the day and all the movements and everything, it's a great blessing to gather back in the house of the Lord. And to know that one of these days, amen, we shall gather in that beautiful land. Amen. And this gathering will never end. And the service will never end. Amen. It will run for eternity. Oh, glory to God. And what a blessing it will be to shake your hands over there. In that city where the Lamb is a light. Praise God. So I always enjoy any time we are together. It's always a great blessing. Because we can't gather together like this and go back the same. Anytime we gather, just the reading of the word of God is a blessing. Amen. To be, back, to be able to sit down together in the cool of the evening. Away from the world. Away from the noises, away from uh, the, the, the things that people are worried about and people care about, amen, the cares of this life and all the rest of them, and just gather together like this, you know, in the presence of the Lord. We are closer to heaven. Amen. You know, but Abraham said that when you go on your knees, you are closer to heaven. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. We get closer to the throne. Praise God. And uh, we can see the angels. We can see the living creatures. Praise God. You know, my title is Why Satan Hates Revelation. Why Satan Hates Revelation. Amen. There are things the devil don't like to hear. The things he don't like to hear. There are things we are doing. That the devil don't want to hear. He gets distorted. Anytime we gather, it disturbs him. It troubles him. He's in a very bad shape. Because the things that happen in these services, the things we say, exposes Satan. Amen. Exposes him. And that's one thing the devil don't like. Satan don't want to be exposed. 
So he will do everything he can to keep people from places like this. Because he hate to be exposed. He hate to be called by his name. He hate for the people to know about his tricks. He hate to, for the people to know his wicked devices. But thank God, the Bible said we are not ignorant of his wicked devices. So he get disturbed. Amen. So don't tell me the devil just allow you to come here. He will do everything he can to stop you from coming to places like this. Amen. But if you are predestinated before the foundation of the world, you can't miss your place. You can't miss your position. Amen. You must answer your name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh my. I want to hear something from you. Because I, 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 I don't like when we come together. Amen. We can't remember babies, church. We can't remember children. We should mature them by now. Amen. We should get used to this atmosphere. But until nothing will ever stop us. Not even what happened at home before we came. Amen. We know how to put those things behind us. We don't have to keep those troubles out there. And we walk in here with our mind free. Amen. With our heart fixed. On these heavenly spiritual blessings. But this is what matters. What happened at home doesn't matter. What happened in your place of work doesn't matter. What happens around you does not matter. This is what matters. This is what matters. And this is where things that matter happen. So let me hear you shouting. I don't have to beg you to do that. Let me hear you praising the Lord. That's a sign of an overcomer. That shows that you are overcoming. And we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Amen, 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 amen. We are, we are living in such a glorious time that when we gather like this, brother, you should be so excited. This place should not contain us. Amen. The joy bells should be ringing every single moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. Our heart should be jumping. Something within me. Amen. So much on the inside that it comes out on the outside. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do you love him? You may be seated. <laughs> Let's go to the church age book. And enjoy some few things there. This book is usually termed the revelation of St. John. But that is incorrect. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ given to John. For Christians of all ages. It is the only book in the entire Bible that is written by Jesus himself. The only book, the book of Revelation, true personally appearing to a scribe, John, 
And there are God, the first time that God wrote was when he wrote with his fingers at Mount Sinai when he gave Moses the Ten Commandments. God wrote the Ten Commandments with his own fingers. That was the time, the first time that God ever wrote. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And the next time was in the book of Revelation. Amen. Amen. After all the dark ages and all the persecutions had struck the church, and Jesus took John to the eyes that is called Patmos, and there he appeared unto John. And then, amen, revealed, gave him the book of Revelation. And John was hearing the voice of Christ and was writing everything that he was told. So the book of Revelation is not the revelation of St. John, but is the revelation of Jesus Christ given to John for Christians of all ages. Amen. Amen. It's the only book in the entire Bible that is written by Jesus himself through personally appearing to a scribe. And that's why it is hard for people to understand the book of Revelation. Because Jesus in his earthly ministry spoke in parables. And the disciples said, why do you talk to them in parables? And you come and expound it to us. And Jesus said, because it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it's not given. So each time Jesus speak, he speak to them in parables. And they go about scratching their head that the, even the lawyers among them find it very hard to understand simple things that Jesus put out to them. That is his characteristic. That's how he deals with them. But when it come inside, he will pick up the same words and begin to open it. And begin to open it to those fishermen, to his own elect, his own bride. He revealed the mysteries to them. Is that because to you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it's not given. So when he wrote the book of Revelation, it is still written in symbols. It was a book of mysteries, a book of symbols. Here a little, there a little, and they couldn't understand it. They can't understand it. But John, being a prophet, he understood every single thing he said. And he kept the book a secret until the days of the voice of the seventh angel. When the prophet struck the earth and he gave him the key that revealed every part of the Bible. Revealed the entire Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. And then Baba showed us that there are two books that Satan hates so much. That Satan don't want to hear. And he said the first one is the book of Genesis. Because in Genesis, Genesis revealed his origin. How he started these tricks. And what he did in the Garden of Eden. But what he did was why we have a savior. That's why we have a redeemer. That's what, why we have a healer. Because of what he did in Genesis. Praise God. And the book of Revelation also revealed his end in the lake of fire. Glory to God. So it is the last book of the Bible. Yet it tells the beginning and the end of the dispensations of the gospel. Now the Greek word for Revelation is apocalypse. Which means unveiling. Unveiling, unveil, reveal. This unveiling is perfectly described in the example of a sculptor unveiling his work of statutory, exposing it to the onlooker. It is an uncovering, revealing what was previously hidden. While he is trying to do the work, he covers his work. You can't see it from outside unless you are invited inside. And he keep walking, he keep walking, he keep walking, he keep walking, and sometimes he will have to break it 
and remold it again. And sometimes he has to take off some parts and redo it again because he's still in the process of molding his masterpiece. In other words, bringing out to the public view what he has in his mind, what was in his great thinking. And why it was in his thinking, it was a mystery. And, uh, uh, it, and it remained a mystery until it is perfectly brought to manifestation. But it's never for the public to view until he finished what he has been doing. Just like God in the seven church ages, he covers what he is doing. In the days of the voice of the seventh angel, the mystery of God should be finished. He covers what he has been doing for seven church ages. But in these last days, when the bright masterpiece stands on the earth, there will be an unveiling of the true bride, of the true church. Amen. Just before the wedding supper, God will show the world who the bride is. That, she is, that he has, is coming to take to the wedding supper. The world will know who the bride is. It will be a manifestation of the sons of God in this adoption time. But while he is doing the work, it's a secret work. He covers what he is doing. The world will see me no more. But you shall see me. You cannot see what he is doing unless you are invited to the inside. Amen. To look beyond the public. What the public see. Praise God. Unless you are given the access to come inside. And I have good news for you. That you are not only invited inside, but you are his workmanship. He is still working on you. He is still working on me. To bring us to perfection. And when God finish what he is doing, there will be a public display of this bride. Who the bride is. The world will see who the bride is. Amen. This unveiling, praise God. The unveiling of God's masterpiece. It's an uncovering, revealing what was previously hidden. Amen. Amen. What was previously hidden? Oh, seven thunders. Previously hidden. Mystery truths. Praise God. Never given out to the public. It's not for their consumption. Previously hidden. But God is doing a secret work. A secret work is going on. For seven church ages. And the book of Revelation reveals the entire thing. From the beginning to the end. Now it's an uncovering revealing what was previously hidden. Now the uncovering is not only the, revel the revelation of the person of Christ. But it is the revelation of his future works. In the oncoming seven church ages. The importance of revelation by the Spirit to a true believer can never be overemphasized. Revelation means more to you than perhaps you realize. Now, I am not talking about this book of Revelation and you. I am talking about all revelation. All revelation, it is tremendously important to the church. Do you remember in Matthew 16 where Jesus asked the disciples this question? He said, who do men say that I does not man, man am? You may be seated. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some Elias and others Jeremiah's. Different interpretations. Which is still what is going on today. The same Jesus Christ. But the question is, who do men say that I does not man am? And some say you are John the Baptist, some say you are Elias, some say you are Jeremiah, and others one of the prophets. Because you need a revelation. 
But the question is, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they have different interpretations. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Whom say ye that I am? And Simon, Peter, that great apostle. You know where he come from. You know what the Lord has done for him. You know where the Lord brought him from. He wasn't just following because others are following. He was looking for something. He saw something in this man. He saw something all the time. So it's not a coincidence that Peter stood up and Peter spoke those powerful words. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Glory. He wasn't following, he wasn't following uh, the, 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 the group. He wasn't following people that came in the message to eat bread. And then because Jesus fed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and then two fishes, he wasn't coming with such a group. He wasn't coming with a group of uh, 70 evangelists that walked away when Jesus said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. He didn't walk away with because he don't belong in that group. His name was not, not in that group. And there are different groups, different groups, different groups. But Peter belonged to that group that followed Christ by revelation. Oh my. And if you bring Peter again in this age, he will still be the same Peter. He won't be moved by what people do. He will not be moved by what people say. He will not be moved by what people think. He will not be moved by the popular opinion or the, popular, the, the, the popularity of the day. He will still walk by revelation. Amen. Glory to God. So Peter stood up and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What a revelation. Those words might seem simple, but they are so powerful. They are so powerful until Jesus said, Blessed are thou, Simon, by Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. In other words, you never learned of it in a seminary. You never learned from, of it from any, any theological school. Nobody ever taught you this. If you ever have a revelation, it must come from God. And that revelation, that is your light. That's a light to walk in. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Amen. That's the overcoming power. There was war in heaven. Glory. And the war in heaven has come down to the earth. And the same way that Michael conquered Lucifer over there, it's the same way that this bride conquers Lucifer today. It has to come only by the same tool, by the same weapon. And that weapon is not a man-made weapon. It's not a flesh and blood weapon. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what shakes the devil. That's what makes him afraid. That's what he hates so much about his bride. That's why the bride is different. That's what the devil hates so much about what you come here to do. What you are doing here every day. He hates this so much. Not because of the building. Not because of the people. But because there's a revelation in these people that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. There's something that disturbs Satan so much. Something that makes him so uncomfortable. Something that gives the devil a sleepless night is revelation. When the church stands upon the solid rock revelation of Jesus Christ, of who he is, the gates of hell cannot prevail against her. 
Oh my. You may be seated. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. But my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Glory. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is what disturbs Satan so much. This is what makes him afraid. This is what he hates. He don't care about the big structure. He don't care about the theological well-placed speech. He don't care about how people nicely dress and all the rest of that. He don't care about that. But what hurts the devil is when he sees that church standing upon the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. And the devil himself knows that he can do nothing about that. He cannot destabilize that church. He cannot destabilize that bride, that believer. He cannot destabilize him. But the gates of hell cannot prevail against that revelation. Oh, come on. This is what put him in trouble. This is where he come to his end. We're not talking about the trials you go through every day. We're talking about the victory that's in Christ Jesus. That Jesus has already given. We are talking about that the gates of hell cannot prevail. Something that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Oh, hallelujah. It's a life behind the name that makes the demons tremble. That gives the devil a knockout blow. Amen. That kick him out of heaven. Praise God. Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. My glory. Can you see how blessed you are? That we have something that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. And that's what we preach. And when you preach it, you make the devil uncomfortable. When you walk, when you walk in here in the spirit, when you walk in here knowing that you know, that you know, that you know, you are not waiting for anybody to tell you what to do. You're walking here by revelation. You're walking here because your father has revealed to you that you have an appointment today with a supernatural. And you're walking here not to see a man. You're walking here to see Jesus Christ. You make the devil uncomfortable. You make him uncomfortable. Amen. Because that is a revelation that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Oh, the devil hates revelation so much. But we love it. We love it. We preach it. We speak it. We walk by it. We live by it. We live by revelation. We walk by faith. And faith is a revelation. That's the action. You may be seated. The Roman Catholic says that the church is built upon Peter. Now that is really canal. How could God build the church upon a man so unstable that he denied the Lord Jesus and cost? Why don't he? God can build his church upon any man born in sin. And it wasn't some rock lying there as though God has hollowed the ground at that spot. And it isn't as the Protestants say that the church is built upon Jesus. It was a revelation. He never built a church upon Peter. Neither did he build a church upon himself. It was upon the revelation 
read it the way it is written. Flesh and blood has not revealed it. But my father has revealed it. <laughs> and upon this rock, revelation, flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you. But my father, which is in heaven, he's the one that revealed it. If you ever have it, it comes from God. Nobody can give you revelation. God has to give it to you. God has to call you. No man can come to me except my father draws him. God himself does the drawing. And when God calls you, you can never, you can never resist. It comes directly from your father. And that is what your heart desires. <clears throat> he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this rock, amen, of what he has revealed, I will build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my father, which is in heaven, has revealed it. And upon this rock, revelation, I will build my church. So the church is built on revelation. Oh, hallelujah. And thus said the Lord. That is why it can never work in a group. It has to be individuals. It has to be you as an individual. Not a group. As God does not give a group revelation. God gives individual revelation. He calls you by your name. He calls you by your name. He calls you by your name. And he gives you something. He gives you a portion of himself to follow him and not a man. To follow him and not an angel. To follow him and not a spirit. To follow Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I don't care how many devils try to fight against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail. I don't care how many trials comes against it. The gates of hell shall not prevail. I don't care how many oppositions you face every day. The gates of hell shall not prevail. I don't care, amen. Thousands of thousands of demons, amen. But the gates of hell shall not prevail. Shall not prevail. There was war in heaven. And Michael fought against Lucifer with his angels. And Satan also fought with his angels. But their place was not found in heaven anymore. And they were kicked out of heaven. The grace of hell shall not prevail against this bride that stands upon the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. This is what disturbs Satan so much. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. We have victory. By the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Oh, come on. Overcoming power. Lays in that revelation. Oh my, that is your sword. That is the weapon we fight with. Glory to God. How did Eben know what to do in order to offer a proper sacrifice to God? You may be seated. How did he know what to do? The Bible said by faith, he received a revelation. He offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. What happened? He had a revelation of the blood. It was a revelation to Abel. A revelation of the blood. Cain didn't get such a revelation. Even though he has a, a, a commandment. He had a commandment. 
and God told him to do as your brother. But he didn't have that revelation. So he couldn't offer the right sacrifice. It was a revelation from God that made the difference and gave Abel eternal life. A revelation from heaven. Glory to God. A revelation separates Cain from Abel. A revelation separates Esau and Jacob. That's what does the separating. Esau was born of his same parents with Jacob. But before they were born, God said, Esau have I hated. And Jacob had I loved. Because God in his foreknowledge, God never predestinated Cain to be lost. No, God did not predestinate Cain to be lost. But God in his foreknowledge knew that Cain will have no respect for the birthright. That's how God predestinates. By his foreknowledge. He knows what you will do. He knows what you will be. He knows what you will believe. He knows what you will stand for. God in his foreknowledge. He knows that you will be here today. And then by his foreknowledge. He did predestinate. That nothing can stop you. Nothing can change it. Nothing can stop it. The gates of hell cannot prevail. Cannot stop you from getting to your position that is predestination but God in his foreknowledge foreknew you he saw you when you were in your great 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 grandfather's loins God foreknew you and he knew that you would believe his word he knew that you would stand for him in the world where there's filthiness, in the world that is rotten, in the world full of fornication, full of adultery, full of drunkenness, full of ungodliness, God knew that you would stand for him. God knew that you will hate sin, you will hate evil, you will hate the world, and you will love righteousness. God foreknew you. And those he foreknew, he did predestinate that nothing can ever stop you. Nothing will ever stop your, your, your revelation. Nothing will ever stop you from getting to your position. Predestinated. Amen. Glory to God. You can never fail. You can stop halfway. Because God foreknew you. And those he foreknew, he called. That's why there's no mistake in God. God don't make mistakes. That's why there may be many fine people out there. But he foreknew them too. Self-righteous, nice people. But he also foreknew them. And knew that they will have no respect for the birthright. For the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They cannot walk by revelation. Though they are self-righteous. They are fine people. They are nice people. They don't do anyhow. But they don't have respect for the birthright. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Which is what really matters. Not how righteous you are. Not how nice you are. Not how religious you are. But Jacob, he was everything in the calendar. Jacob was a deceiver. Jacob was a liar. Jacob was a supplanter. Jacob was everything in the calendar. But yet, God knew through foreknowledge that Jacob has respect for that bad right. And therefore, he did predestinate Jacob to receive Abraham's blessing. But Esau was a nice man. Esau was love of his father. And his father was a prophet. And yet he loved Esau so much that he wanted to give Esau the blessing of Abraham because it was his by right. But Esau has no value for the birthright. 
And therefore, he got what he wanted. A porridge. A morsel of porridge. And he got what he wanted. But Jacob has respect for the birthright. And Jacob also got what he wanted. The birthright. And that's what God foresaw in Jacob. That Jacob will love the birthright. And Jacob we press onto the birthright. And Jacob, we, we, we have respect for the birthright. And Jacob, we fight for the birthright. Jacob, we press for the birthright. Jacob, his heart, his mind, his thoughts is on that birthright. You can't stop it. And therefore, God did predestinate him to receive the birthright. Oh, hallelujah. And he was searching for it every day. Every day. Every service. Every day. Every opportunity. He was looking for a way to grab that birthright. Every day. His heart was fixed on that birthright. Every moment. His heart was how to grab that birthright. Hallelujah. Until one day. Amen. Esau came back. And was hungry. And, and, and Jacob just had a muscle. Just prepared some porridge. And here come Esau, give me porridge. And Jacob said, well, I will try this again. If it fell yesterday, it cannot fail today. Hallelujah. He said, I can't give you my, 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 my meal unless you give me the better right. It wasn't an accident. His heart has always been there. That's what he has always been looking for. He said, give me the better right. And Esau said, is that what you want? Just give me food, let me eat. He said, give me the better right. He said, take it. He said, now swear to me before God. Swear to me that you have given it to me. He said, God said, ah, what, what do you mean? Okay, I swear, take it. Give me food. And the moment it happened, God sealed it in heaven. And Esau never got it back again. And that's how people feel when you come to church. If you want association, that's what you get. If you want to belong to a group, that's what you get. If you are coming to church to be nice, that's what you will get. But if you want this bad right, if you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will never rest. You will never stop. You will never relax until you are filled with the Holy Ghost, until something happens on the inside, until you get that experience. Amen. Until God does something for you. Glory, seal it in there, in the fifth rib, down in your soul, that you know that you have been redeemed. You know you are free. Glory, God is not looking for some nice people. God is looking for a bride that has respect for that birthright. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, I can't hear you. I don't want to keep begging you for amen. This should be coming from you spontaneously. I should be the one to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because if you catch what I'm saying, brother, you will walk by this revelation. You will not be walking by sight. You will not be walking by what you hear. There will be a revelation in your soul. That's what the gates of hell cannot prevail against. It will not be a church revival. It will be a Holy Ghost revival. That when you go back home, you will remain in a revival. The revival will be in you. When you are walking on the street, the revival will be in you. When you are in your office, the revival will be in you. When you go to the market, you go to the market, the revival is in you. And the grace of hell cannot prevail against it. That's when you have changed from death unto life. That's when you are living. You are living by the life of Jesus Christ. Which is divine revelation. You are living by that original life. You are not living by the light of the sun. As good as it is. And many are living by the light of the sun. <coughs> but when the sun goes down, everything goes blacks out. 
and some live by just the, uh, the, the, the light of the moon. And they are still in church. And they are trying to glance through and trying to see if they can catch it. So when you're preaching, they are trying to see if they can catch what he is saying. Just living by the light of the moon. And some are living by the light of the sun. Just a seasonal revival. Seasonal revival. Today it is, tomorrow it's not. And all of a sudden the sun goes down. And everywhere is blacked out. And they don't know again. They are waiting for the next season. They are waiting for, they are waiting for the next service. They are waiting for the next uh, um, song leader that we create an atmosphere. But brother, when you enter into that Shekinah, when you walk into that divine presence, when you are, where you are living by the revelation of Jesus Christ, that light never goes out. That light is not seasonal light. That's an eternal light. You live on it every day. You walk in it every day. Every day. Every season. It's good for every season. It's good for every day. When you enter there, brother, I will be the one to be holding you. I will not be the one begging for your amen. I'll be the one to say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, listen, hold on. Because it's spontaneous. Oh, come and go with me to my father's house. That's what the devil is afraid of. That's what he fears so much. Believers walking by faith. Walking in the light of the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what the devil fears so much. But when they are nice church people, nice intellectual church people, the devil don't worry about that. Because what Ram said that when the church was preaching salvation on the Pentecost, the devil was never disturbed. When there went 3,000 souls we are one and added to the church. Satan was never bothered. He was so relaxed. Watching what they are doing. But when Peter and John. Came to the gate called beautiful. And there was that crippled man there. And Peter said look at us. And it caught the man's attention. The message took effect right there. Say silver and gold have I known. But such as I have. I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Took him by the hand, raised him up. And those dry, dead, ankle bones receive strength right there. Said, so I said, no, no, no. We can't let this happen. We can't let this continue. We are finished. And he went and stared the heart of the council. And Herod and Pilate. And all the rest of them, they stood up to persecute the church. But but Abraham told us, he said, when the press comes down, what's the top put then? So there has to be something that will make the devil uncomfortable. So we have, he will have his final defeat. Glory. Oh my, a few more minutes. Praise this wonderful name. Hallelujah. Now you might take what the pastor says or what the seminary teaches. And though it might be taught to you with eloquence, that's, but that's not what I'm talking about. It might be taught to you, to you with eloquence, but until God reveals to you, God reveals to you a personal revelation. My, I was having a good time with a, a sister last night. Called me. I was, I was, I was sharing a testimony. He said he never knew the difference between new birth and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He has always thought that the new birth is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, but that day when you pick it up and began to open it and separated the new birth 
for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I could see clearly that I have always been born again. He said, now I know what to pray for. I'm not praying to be born again. He said, now I know what to pray for. I am born again. But I'm looking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oh my. He said, this place could not contain me. He said, I was running around my seat, running around my seat. I said, that's what revelation does. Amen. That's what the gates of hell cannot prevail against. When the word comes to you personally, personally, God reveals it to you personally. And you are shouting, you are dancing, and people don't know why you are doing what you are doing. But flesh and blood has not revealed it to you. But my father in heaven, he gave you that revelation. He opened up that mystery. Justification made the way for sanctification. And the sanctification made a way for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost made a way for the Holy Ghost itself to come right down in perfection and take us back to the world again. These things has been explained. But you can't get it by natural, theological eloquence. It has to come to you by revelation. Personally. God comes down in a service and visits you. He comes down and visits you. He leaves a portion of himself there. He passes through you and leaves a portion of himself there that will never depart from you. That will never leave you. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. All the trials in the world will never knock it out from you. They can't take it from you. Praise God. Oh, glory. Until God reveals it to you that Jesus is the Christ and that is the blood that cleanses you and that God is your Savior, you will never have eternal life until it's revealed to you. It is the spiritual revelation that does it. Spiritual revelation. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Wake up. Amen. Get, it, get in the spirit. Get up here. Come up here. Come up here. You haven't caught what I'm saying. You need to pray for this revelation. You need to pray for God to open your eyes. Open your understanding to what is happening here every service. You need to open up. Because when it happens, brother, nobody will tell you. Amen. It will speak for itself. It separates you from the other group. The group of people that come to church. It separates you. And makes you different. Amen. You are living in that light. Not the sunlight. Not the moonlight. Not even the torchlight. Not the lantern. You are living in the presence of God's eternal sunlight. S-O-N light. God's eternal S-O-N light. You are living there all the time. Your attention does not go away from here. You don't flash in and flash out. You stay in that presence. You live in that presence. You enjoy that presence. You walk in that light. You worship in that light. Hallelujah. That is your power. You live in that light. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let this happen. Let that happen. It can't take away that attention. Let this one go. This one come. It doesn't take it away. Let this one sit down by my side. And this one lie down by my side. But it can never take it away from you. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Then you know that you have passed from death unto life. Then you know that darkness has finally given way 
for God's eternal sunlight to bring forth the seeds of God that's been laying in your soul, in your good ground, waiting for that season of God's sunlight to wake up those seeds, to dramatize every seed that God has placed in you with all the bright promises placed in your soul. The gates of hell cannot prevail against it. This is what the gates of hell can never prevail against. It has to come to you as an individual. Amen. Jacob believed it. Jacob pressed for it. Jacob hungered for it. Jacob pressed for it. Every blessed day. I don't know how many years it took him to get to that. Because what happened that day was never a coincidence. It took him years. He was looking for that day. He was looking for that chance. He was looking for that bed right. He went to grab that bed right. He was pressing. He was searching. He was squeezing. He was coming this way, that way, this way, that way. He was coming and he was getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And God said, Jacob, have I loved? Because God saw that character. God saw that nature in Jacob. And he said, Jacob, have I loved? But Esau, I have hated. And Jacob pressed and pressed and pressed and pressed until that service. There was a porridge. Oh my. I thank God for this porridge. We have something to feast on. The world is starving. Esau is starving. In the church, Esau is starving. But Jacob is having a good meal. A seven course menu with all the spiritual vitamins. My brother, if I'm going to give it to you, you will never get it free. I want that birthright. I want that inheritance. Hallelujah. Because the seed cannot be air with a shock. The shock has to dry. The shock is drying out. But the seed is receiving the entire life. And the prophet said that all the life must be gathered up in the seed. And then the, when the life in the, sto in the, in the, in the tassel and the pollen and the, and, and the back and everything dries out and gathers into the seed. Then the seed changed color from green to golden brown. While the shaft and the tassel and the rest of them, they also change color and change to yellow straw. Why? They are under the same sunlight. But the seed has the jam in it. Has the full life in it. And you go inside that seed, you will see that jam of life in the center of the seed. You can plant it for the resurrection. It will come up in the resurrection because it has the seed jam inside it. But the rest of them dries out. And they are dry. And you can't do anything with it than to set them on fire. So there has to come a time that there must be a separation. Amen. And revelation is what does the separation. Then the entire life goes into the seed. Is, is so have I hated. And Jacob have I loved. And Jacob finally laid hold on the birthright, which he has been looking for since he came to the message. The baptism of the Holy Ghost. Where all the bright promises lays. Oh my. Nobody can take it from him, brother. Nobody. But that's what he has been looking for in this message. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. 
Can we just worship the Lord one more time? Oh my, can, can we just do that? You're not worshiping me. You're not doing that for me. All my desire is to see this church cross over into divine revelation. Cross over into the promises. Cross over into that inheritance. Come like Jacob. Hallelujah. Come believing. Looking for that birthright. right. If it didn't come today, it's coming tomorrow. If I don't see it in the valley, I'm climbing the mountain. But I must get that bet right. Hallelujah. Let's just worship the Lord just in your own way. You don't have to sleep. You don't have to. You don't have to behave as if you are not hungry for anything. As if nothing is important to you. Because people act as if nothing is important to them. That if there's nothing important, nothing at stake. They, are, they act as if there's nothing to nothing to really look for nothing to ask for nothing to hunger for they are just there as if they are doing God a favor by just dragging their flesh to church but if there's something at stake if there's something you need if there's something you are after if there's something that's between life and death to you between life and death even your weak condition will never stop you even your sick condition will never stop you even your pains in your body cannot stop you. The case of hell cannot prevail. Because when you grab this, it will take care of all your problems. It will take care of all your natural needs. It will take care of all, all those things that the devil tried to bring up on you. Don't behave as, as, as if there's nothing important. As if nothing, nothing is really important here. But that's how many people behave. And that's the attitude of Esau. That's Esau's attitude. Nothing is important to me. He has it by right, but he never knew that God must sanction it. God must seal it into your heart. Otherwise, you will lose it. You will lose what God has given to you. So don't be like Esau. Be like Jacob.
Praise the Lord. Thank for the revelation of Jesus Christ. The spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ for this day, Father. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, we love you, Lord Jesus. How we love you. I appreciate you, Father. Thank for your presence, Lord. Thank for the anointing that makes the difference, Lord. Thank for your spirit for in your war, God. Hallelujah. Oh, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is thy angel right here tonight, Father. Oh, Lord, we praise you, Lord Jesus. How we love you, Lord. How we appreciate you, Father. Hey, we call you Father. We call you Jesus, Lord. Pass to your people one more time, Lord. And touch your people, Father. Move among us one more time, Father. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. May your city angel, God, mirrors upon everyone that's silent and crying. And Lord, for the population of the the city, Father. Oh, God. Oh, God, we love you. We appreciate you, Father. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you for the minister of the Spirit, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you for the 17th revival. Oh, God, let's move 
among us, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. How we love you. How we appreciate you, Father. Oh, God. Oh, let's see your living words from, from my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control in every situation that walk on my mind. All my plans and bodies unto you. Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name I know. Face my every longing. Kiss me singing as I go. Oh my. Mm. Your sweetest name I I love it. 
face is Lord. God be praised. Oh, when your eyes are on me, shine the other race. Help us to me. Worship him, let's thank him. He's ready to praise. Oh, we are created to praise him. We are created to worship him. That's what we live for. We live to give him praise. We live to worship him. Oh, Lord, we want praise in him tonight, Lord. We praise him one and call one mind, oh God. Oh, God be praised, God be praised, God be praised, God be praised. Lift up voices and praise him. Lift up voices and worship him this evening. Oh, praise him, somebody. Praise him, all your people. Worship him this evening. Oh, for we praise him tonight. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, King of glory. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I love to praise you. I love to worship you. I love to lift him up on high. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. I'm a praise you. I don't care how I feel. I don't have to praise you anyhow. I don't have to worship you anyhow. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my. Jesus, I will love you. I will worship you, Father. We bow before you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. We bow before you, Jesus, and just worship you. Living creatures worship you. Turn very arrows worship you. Lord, this evening we join the every prayer of God. Oh, God, we thank you for that believer position, oh God. Have your blessing, Christ Jesus. Oh, our spirit up to God, Father. With our hands lift up heaven, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we love you and appreciate you tonight. We thank you for the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, for today, Father. Oh, thank you for Malachi 4. We thank you for the seven turners. Oh, thank you for the revelation of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, the revelation of the seven seal. We thank you for who you are. Oh, God, calling our name out, Lord, and placing our name, oh God, in that lamp section, Father. Oh, God, we love you and appreciate you, Father. We thank you for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Oh, oh God, is in this locality, Father. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Thank you so much, our pastor, God. Oh, God, thank you for the inspiration you gave to me tonight, Father. Lord God, to brought for this message tonight, oh God. Oh, God, Satan hate this revelation, but we love it, Father. Oh, God, we thank you. We appreciate you, Father. That's, a, that's, that's something about that, Jesus. Oh, God, the sweetest name I know. The feast, my every longing, keep me singing while I go, Lord Jesus. We love you tonight, Father. I pray for spiritual strength. I pray for the pastor, Lord God. Virtue of this body tonight, Father. I pray for a fresh anointing upon this body, Father. Oh God, thank you, oh God, for his life, for his ministry, oh God. Lord, dying out, oh God, for us to hear from you, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for the inspiration, oh God, the breath, oh God, from you, Father, oh God. Receive it from you, oh Jesus. We thank you. For the inspiration, thank you for the anointing that makes the difference to God. 
in this service is Lord Jesus. We thank you for your people, God, Lord, that have sat under this anointing, Father. Under the preaching of your word, God, may we go home with this anointing, Father. Lord, may we live under the inspiration of God. May we live in this liberation of Jesus Christ for our day, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, we love you. We appreciate you, Father. Be it to your people, Father. Give us more grace to run the race, oh God. More grace, oh God, to press our way through, Father. Oh God, press our way into the kingdom of God. It's an even of us here tonight, Father. Young people, they can't help to shoot them, Father. Oh God, may we run out, oh God. We will press our way in, Father. God, run the race, Father, oh God, that's set before us, Lord Jesus. We can't do nothing without you, Father. We need your grace, oh God. We need your mercy, oh God. Help us, precious Lord. Draw us more closer, oh God. Set our hearts on fire, Lord Jesus. Oh God, burn, burn, Holy Spirit, Father. Burn in us, oh God. Set our hearts on fire. Oh Open our understanding on your word, Jesus, to understand what the Holy Spirit is saying out there, Father. We love and appreciate you, Father. As of every here tonight, Lord Jesus, may angel go with your people to their homes, to their families, Lord Jesus, on the highways, oh God. May we meet on this things, Father Jesus. Thank you for your blessings, oh God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the feeling of the Holy Spirit, Father. Oh God, thank you for just, Lord. We love you and I appreciate you, Father. Be with your servant and our pastor, Lord. Bless his wife, bless his ministry. Bless his levels of love, Lord, in this recovery, Father. We love and appreciate you, Father. So to the weak ones among us, God, we by the best light us, oh God. Give us more grace, oh God, to run the race, oh God. Oh God, we love and appreciate you, Father. Today, Lord, we all, we continue to give you the praise, the glory, the honor, the duration, the duty of most wonderful name, Lord. As this blessing we thank you in, in Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, my, 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 my. What can we say, friends? Do you have the Holy Spirit this evening? Do you have a chance to go our pastor? Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, pastor. We appreciate you. Amen for giving yourself to be used this evening. One more time, do you have a chance to go Glory, my God, amen. Praise God, amen. Reach out to your brother. Reach out to your sister. Amen, amen. Deep, the love of God is deep in my heart. Amen. Oh, deep, deep, valley, deep, valley, deep in my heart. Oh, the love of God is valley, deep in my heart. Oh, deep, deep, valley, deep, valley, deep in my heart.
to sing. I know you know, you know the song. Jummy, let's sing together. Come on now. Give the love of God is in your heart. Let's sing. Everybody sing it. Wonderful Lord. 